Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin met in the Russian capital of Moscow for a closed-door meeting. Their sit-down has worried the world, wondering if these two nations are up to something sinister or if, indeed, a resolution is being found for this Russia-Ukraine war. All eyes were on Moscow. Turning now to a high-stakes high stakes visit between two powerful strategic partners. Between two of the world's most powerful nations. Chinese President Xi Jinping. President Xi. President Xi Jinping. President Xi Jinping has left Moscow after two days of talks with President Vladimir Putin. Beijing has described it as a trip for friendship and peace. Well, this is Xi Jinping's first visit to Russia since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And in that sense, it is a demonstration of support from Russia. Mr Xi says that China will work with Russia to safeguard the international order. Well, Xi Jinping uh, called for pragmatism on Ukraine. The visit is a clear sign of support for Russia. Since Russia invaded Ukraine over a year ago, almost the entire world has alienated Russia with the West imposing heavy sanctions and restrictions on the nation. The only nation that has been there for Russia is China, and the two have seen their ties grow more robust than ever. The West fears that China is on the brink of offering Russia military help, something that will turn an already disastrous situation into an unbearable one. That is why Xi's visit has had a few bones rattling. In this video, I'll explore the talking points of the meeting and the concessions and agreements that have been made between the two superpowers. I will also explore how the US is tied into this and the ramifications that this meeting will have on the US. I'm trying my best to get this video out as soon as possible since the meeting, like, just happened, and that means some fast edits. So if you guys can take a quick second to appreciate the effort and hit the like button below, it would help me out a lot. To understand how this meeting came to be, we need to understand how China inserted itself into this invasion situation. Just around the one-year mark of Russia's war against Ukraine, China decided to step into the situation to mediate between both sides. Its intervention came in the form of a 12-point proposal to end the fighting and bring about peace. When this plan was announced, President Xi Jinping's government emphasized how China was neutral in this situation. And because it was neutral, it was seeking a peaceful resolution to the war. The language of the document, which was not particularly kind to the West, echoed sentiments that those Western governments were to blame for the invasion through their actions. It is in the spirit of bringing Russia to the peace-talking table that sent President Xi Jinping to Moscow. The three-day meeting between the two superpowers had a lot of talking points, most of them centralized around war-related talk and continued trade growth between the two nations. At the end of the talk, there is now a clear picture of how things went down and how those talks have shaped the world today. Let's go over the major talking points of the meeting. Some of these will shock you. It's no secret that there is no love lost between both Russia and the US. Putin's government has been very vocal about American interference and nosiness, so to say. The same goes for Beijing. In recent weeks, after the US blew up China's weather balloon, I uploaded a video that touched on their relations. I'll link the video in the description below. After that balloon was brought down, Beijing was quick to express that the US had become conceited and is more of a bully. It is therefore no surprise that one of the major agendas, the real agenda as some would say, was China and Russia's desire to deepen their interests targeted mainly against the US. The US stands as a barricade to Russia and China doing as they please. When you look at Taiwan and even the Ukraine situation, you get perspective on this. If China and Russia were to unite and strategically destabilize the current world order in favor of their own, they would, by all means, become unstoppable. Many experts say strategies to implement such a plan were at the heart of these closed-door meetings, and that the two superpowers are planning something to that order. These sentiments were solidified because at a dinner during that summit, Putin, on how the global power dynamics are shifting, had this to say. Together, we should push forward these changes that have not happened for a hundred years. Take care. The two leaders expressed in not-so-subtle language that the US's time was up, and that the US had to stop interfering in matters. No doubt Russia is not happy with the military aid that Ukraine has been receiving. And on the other hand, 
China is angered by the US's constant support of Taiwan. The phrase that kept being used by these two nations was multipolar world. In short, this is a word that means a system that is not led by so-called Western values and rules. China and Russia want to shape the world in their own image and make it less like the Western culture and value system have made it out to be. In what seems like a direct attack on Washington, both nations said they urge the United States to stop undermining international and regional security and global strategic stability to maintain its unilateral military superiority. If nothing else, such joint statements show how synchronized and aligned the Chinese and Russian worldviews are. To both Beijing and Moscow, the US is a threat and one that should be taken out of the picture. This is easier said than done, however, because of the allies that the US carries, which is maybe one of the reasons why both Russia and China are seeking to deepen their ties and become more aligned. Such sentiments can be felt through the joint statement that both countries released, expressing concerns over NATO, a coalition of allies for the US. The statement said that both nations opposed the continuous strengthening of military ties with Asia-Pacific countries, and that they opposed external military forces undermining regional peace and stability. This statement comes as no surprise to anyone, given that the US and its allies have been the chief deterrent to China just doing as they please in the South China Sea. On the other hand, NATO's strength has been a thorn in Russia's side for the longest time. It's almost scary how both Russia and China have aligned purposes that pit them against the rest of the world. This is why Russian and Chinese pledges to become more militarily aligned and increase joint exercises come as somewhat of a scary prospect. Just how far will these juggernauts take such a partnership? The two nations have already been having joint drills globally. Could this be some sort of practice? Could this be in preparation for something we do not know about yet? Now make no mistake, the United States, China, and Russia are the chief players in global politics. If fractures and sides are being taken among these nations and their allies, this is not good news for anyone. If anything, this is just making for a more divided, fractured, and unstable world. Around the same time that Xi visited Putin, there was also a meeting in Ukraine between Zelensky and Japanese leader Kashida. This just shows how the global superpowers are taking stances and reinforcing ties in the face of the horrors to come. If each of the main powers and their allies start to strategically align, the world is going to be divided into chunks that will ruin any form of global unity we can aim to have. Aside from uniting against the US and its allies, there are more talking points to take from President Xi's visit. Chief among them is the map and direction of Ukraine's future, the supposed key point for the trip. On one hand, it's very tempting to applaud China for having come up with talking points that are meant to lead to peace. But on the other hand, it's easy to see the facade in these points. The language of these points shows that China was never really hopeful about coming to any reasonable conclusion, but instead shines in the light of having to be the hero. If nothing else, this situation is meant to increase China's PR without actually achieving anything at all. Why do I say so? Because China's language and its proposal is so watered down that China doesn't even acknowledge that Russia's invasion and use of military force are what has resulted in this crisis. Instead, through joint statements with Moscow, China just vaguely communicates that any actions that increase tensions between Ukraine and Russia should be halted. It's funny, isn't it? It's like a robber and the police coming out to make a joint statement on the evils of stealing. In a similar fashion that shows their utter disdain for the West, the two leaders also urged NATO to respect the sovereignty, security, interests of other nations. This was in context of both China and Russia blaming NATO for provoking Russia to invade. The simple truth is that President Xi has no breakthrough in resolving the conflict in Ukraine. Even before his visit, both the West and Ukraine had made it clear that China's proposal was unacceptable. This is primarily because in that entire peace proposal, nowhere does it include the provision that Moscow should withdraw their troops from Ukrainian land. This is a key point because according to Ukraine, 
If the aggressor is not withdrawing its troops, then any sort of ceasefire just counts as time for the enemy to gain strength and fortify its hold. Xi's proposal is a failure, but he must have known this was going to happen. So why go through all this trouble? What are they gaining from this situation? Well, this. The leaders of China and Russia are hailing a new era in relations. For Vladimir Putin especially, this visit matters. Putin and Xi pledge to strengthen ties. He's signing an economic deal. To expand bilateral trade and energy ties. Deepening their partnership. China has been propping up Russia's economy amid Western sanctions. Giving Vladimir Putin what Western sanctions are designed to deny him of. Cash to fund his war in Ukraine. If Russia's invasion is still affecting global markets a year later, what could Xi's increased support do to our remaining investments? Increased costs due to the invasion have already driven the US into a technical recession and caused billions in losses for business and individual investors. Especially for those using a typical stock-heavy portfolio, the year will only bring more losses, according to Goldman Sachs. This illustrates why major financial institutions like Goldman now stress the importance of diversifying your investments into alternative assets. Assets like gold, real estate, and art. The New York Times says, when stock markets take a dive, people look to invest in art. And in 2022, art prices rose an average of 29% according to Barron's, handily beating stocks. Masterworks platform lets you invest in shares of these multi-million dollar artworks from legends like Banksy and Picasso, so you can diversify without needing millions. To date, Masterworks has sold 11 paintings, every single one of them returning a profit to their investors, with the last three delivering 10, 13, and 35% net returns. With results like that, even as the stock market saw its worst losses since 2008, Masterworks is flooded with demand. Paintings have even sold out in under an hour, so there is a wait list. But you can skip it right now by clicking the link for priority access. With the entirety of Europe alienating Russia for its aggression, China has stepped up to be the only major superpower still having dealings with Russia. This has had the effect of providing Russia with a market and finances for its war machine, while also autonomously giving China whatever it needs at bargain prices. And by that, I do mean bargain prices. The longer this war has gone on, the more reliant Russia has grown on China. During the meetings they had, Putin even echoed that Moscow was ready to support Chinese business replacing Western enterprises that left Russia since the start of the invasion of Ukraine. For China, this is a pretty clear win. In joint statements, both Putin and Xi have said that they will build a closer energy partnership, supporting companies from both countries in advancing cooperation projects in oil, gas, coal, electricity, and nuclear energy. China has basically become Russia's major market for all their energy. Putin even added that there were talks of the implementation of the initiative to build the Power of Siberia 2 gas pipeline through the territory of Mongolia for Chinese needs. For the most part, this seems like a replacement for the Nord Stream 2 line that delivered gas into Europe. China is basically Russia's crutch, giving Putin the economic support he needs. Being the most populated country on Earth, China is a big market and a worthwhile replacement for the business that Russia has lost. With China's backing, Putin is enabled because he feels he has a strong ally to rely on. On the other hand, President Xi is milking Russia for all he can whilst avoiding direct military help. All the dealings that China is doing with Russia are coming at bargain prices for China. For the Dragon of the East, economic prowess has always been prioritized above all else. This is why, when it comes down to it, it's hard to imagine that China would actually support Russia militarily because then it would be alienated from international markets, much like what happened to Russia. This is not a model that would be suitable for China. However, as much as China is not in a rush to give Russia missiles and tanks, it is fueling Russia's war machine by providing it with the funding that it needs. The whole point of cutting Russia off from the global economic train 
was so that it would not be able to sustain the war. With China financing them in the interests of its own economic advancement, this agenda is put at risk. Also, when you factor in the closeness of China and Russia and their mutual animosity towards the US and their allies, you have to wonder just how much it would take to escalate the situation to a point of no return.